When an alkyl halide is treated with strong base, it undergoes 1-2 elimination. A halide is lost from one carbon and a hydrogen from the other to make an alkene. Because we're losing strong acid, HCl, HBr, or HI, it's not real surprising that we use strong base to make that happen. Bases react with acids, and we can follow the reaction using an arrow pushing. A pair of electrons from the base is used to form a bond with this proton, as this pair of electrons in the sigma bond is used to form a pi bond, which can happen only if this pair of electrons leaves with the halide. When we look closer, we see that this is a one-step concerted reaction. All bond making and bond breaking happens simultaneously, and the transition state looks something like this. We're forming that hydrogen base bond as we break the hydrogen carbon bond. The pi bond is forming as we break the carbon halide bond. All of these atoms involved in bond making and bond breaking are in the same plane, the plane of the screen. When we look at the orbitals involved, it looks something like this. The hybridized orbital of the base that contains a pair of electrons is beginning to overlap with the s orbital of hydrogen as it is losing overlap with what is becoming the p orbital. On an adjacent carbon, there's another p orbital forming as the overlap between this p orbital is forming and the halide hybridized orbital is getting smaller. And as I want to illustrate for emphasis, all of these atoms are in the same plane. All of the things line up like this. The p orbital overlaps, and this is in the same plane. Of course, there's overlap here as this p orbital is forming as well. As we look at this transition state, we can write out several characteristics that would be true of the E2 reaction mechanism. As the transition state implies, this is a concerted reaction. It all happens in one step. All bond breaking and bond making happen simultaneously. The reaction has second order kinetics. The concentration of both reactants affects the reaction. In addition, as we've already said, all the atoms line up in the same plane. This is called coplanar, and they adopt an anti-arrangement. The base is sticking up in one direction, while the halide is sticking out in the opposite direction. This lets the partial negative charge on the halide and the partial negative charge on the base be as far apart as possible. This point turns out to be really important when we talk about stereochemistry. The reaction is stereospecific. Because the alignment of all these atoms has to be exactly like this, the substituent on this carbon, circled as 2, sticking out toward us, and the substituent on this carbon, circled as 3, sticking out toward us, will be sticking out toward us in the product as well. This reaction is stereospecific. The stereochemistry of the reactant dictates the stereochemistry of the product. The rate is affected by the base. The stronger the base, the faster the reaction. The more readily it pulls off a proton. The leaving group. The better the leaving group, the faster the reaction. The better this halide is at accommodating negative charge, the more readily it leaves, so the reaction is faster. And finally, the rate also is affected by the structure itself. The more alkyl groups that are attached to these carbons, the faster the rate. This might seem strange if you're remembering the SN2 reaction. The SN2 reaction was just the opposite. Alkyl groups provide steric hindrance to the approach of a nucleophile. But look at the base. The base is not close to the alkyl groups. It's forming a bond with that proton well away from the alkyl groups. And recall that alkyl groups stabilize alkenes. The fewer hydrogens and the more alkyl groups, the more stable the alkene. So what we're saying is here, the more alkyl groups attached to the carbons, the more alkyl groups will be attached to the alkene. And the alkyl groups stabilize alkenes. So the reaction is faster. As you expect, the energy diagram for this reaction has a single hump. We have an alkyl halide at the beginning. We have an alkene at the end. And energetically, the alkene is higher energy than the alkyl halide. This makes sense. The alkyl halide has two sigma bonds. We're breaking those and replacing them with one weaker pi bond. The activation energy for this single step is affected by how strong the base is, how good the leaving group is, and how stable the structure is that we're forming, because that determines how stable the transition state is. 
This all makes sense and brings up some interesting questions. We need to take a look at this mechanism and what it tells us about the reach of selectivity of the reaction. When we can lose a hydrogen on either side of the halide, we can make different alkenes. Generally, this reaction is regioselective and we need to talk about the factors that affect that selectivity. And secondly, what can we say about the stereochemistry based on this mechanism? Is the reaction stereoselective? Is the reaction stereospecific? Why? Well, I've already told you briefly that the reaction is stereospecific. We should look a little bit closer at that. And it turns out that the reaction can be stereoselective. We need to look into this too. In other videos, I'll talk about the regioselectivity and the stereochemistry of the E2 elimination reaction. 